The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. The light that shines in women's eyes has been my heart's undoing, sings the poet. By this does he mean the light that resides in their eyes, or is it a light in their eyes that tells falsehoods? Who knows? Of one thing we may be certain. When we attempt to interpret the light in a woman's eyes, or even in a man's, we tread on dubious, doubtful, and possibly dangerous ground. Sheriff Parmerly, how, how'd you find him? Uh, this woman was with him, and uh, she ran over to Jensen's to try to get help. At this hour of the night, a, a woman? You mean his wife, don't you? No, she's not his wife. And he's wearing a wedding band. I, I guess she'd better be his sister, huh? Okay, where is she? Well, she's standing right over the... Hey, where did she go? What happened to her? Our mystery drama, The End of the Rainbow, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Terry Keene. that the 40s are the dangerous age. Yes, the 40s. Most people have already seen the dreams of the 20s accommodate to the realities of the 30s, and now one is faced with the need to prepare for the 50s and beyond. But there are still those who must attempt that final desperate fling. Into what? Well, into whatever they think they need. Hello? Uh, oh? Well, listen, Jessica, James is napping. Uh, yeah, he's had the usual day. Oh, no, we haven't had dinner yet. Well, all right, I'll ask him. Let me call you back. <laughs> no, I hope so. James? James? Mom. No. What, what, what is it, Connor? It's time to wake you up. For dinner. Oh, for dinner. That's right. Listen, uh, Jessica just called. Tom has tickets for the ballet. You know how hard they are to come by. Anyhow, there's a pair for us. Oh? I know it's a sudden thing, but it is the greatest dance company in the world. We could meet Tom and Jessica at Lariccio's for dinner. Well... Or if that's too much of a rush, we could have something light here and join them at the theater. Look, honey, it's going to run very late. It'll be over before 11. I know, but then we'll have to stop somewhere. With one thing or another, it'll be 1 o'clock in the morning. I have to make a 7 o'clock flight to Chicago. Oh? Are you going out of town again? There's no way to avoid it. Anyway, actually, I'm so tired I couldn't enjoy the ballet. Listen, I'll tell you what. Why don't you go ahead without me? There would be a problem about the other tickets. If we can't use them, then Jessica would like to give them to the Strattons. Oh. I'll have to call her back, tell her we can't make it. Carlotta, I'm really sorry. No, I understand. It's just that I'm, I, I'm so bushed. I don't even think I want to get up and have dinner. James, it isn't as if this is happening for the first time. Or even the last. <laughs> Sorry you had to get up so early to drive me here, but, you know, at this hour, there was no way I could depend on a limo or a cab. It's all right. I've had plenty of rest. Anyway, I'll see you day after tomorrow. Now, look, if you need me for anything, I'll be at the Ritz-Joliet Hotel. Good enough. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Carlotta, you're angry. Me? Angry? Now, what makes you say that? I just want to say this, for whatever it's worth. You can't have it both ways. What can't I have both ways? I know you're upset about last night. Me? Upset? I know we don't seem to go out very much these days, but you were all in favor of my becoming sales manager. 
and what it means financially. I'm not the one who actually made the decision. Oh, no, but you're enjoying the new house and the boat and the club. And you're enjoying the power and the influence and the deference. Look, I don't think this is the kind of conversation we should be having when I have less than 30 minutes till plane time. When should we be having it? When you're home, you're tired. When you're not tired, you're not home. Why don't I call your secretary? Maybe she can give me an appointment. Carlotta, this isn't fair. But tell me why. I'm going to miss my plane. All right, you'll miss your plane. Carlotta. What can possibly happen? You don't understand. Well, the sun stands still in the sky. Now, don't be foolish, will you? There's a meeting of the board of directors. People are coming in from all over the country, even from Europe. Oh, I'm so impressed. Carlotta, I just wish you All right, could... all right, I'm sorry. We shouldn't be having a scene like this. You will miss your plane. Look, we'll talk when I get back. Sure. I mean it. Now, this time, I really mean it. Look, the ballet that you didn't get to see last night, it's on television tonight. So you really didn't miss it. That's nice. Well, at least it's something for you to do tonight. And as you say, they're a marvelous company. So it should be a nice evening. Don't worry about me. I'll find something interesting and exciting to do. Magnificent. Is that better? Things go well today? Yeah, they uh, may have gone too well. The chairman of the board thinks we should enlarge the agenda. What does that mean? Well, it means we'll have to stay here an extra day or two. Or three? I guess it was my report that did it. You know, it was a fantastic thing, Carlotta. It opened up whole new horizons. I did myself no end of good. Well, that's nice. Is that all you can say? What do you want me to say? Carlotta, we'll make up for all this. You'll see. Sure. No, I mean it. I mean it, too. Darling, I'll be home by the end of the week for sure. And we'll straighten everything out. Yes. Okay, good night, darling, and enjoy the ballet. Hey, look, in tomorrow night, why don't you have dinner with my sister? Good night, James. Why not? All right. Why not? Hi. Buy you a drink? Well, just staring into the mirror behind the bar is no answer. You could say yes. Or you uh, could say no. Or I could tell the bartender you're bothering me. You could. But that wouldn't be such a good idea. No? Oh, he'd tell me to shove off, but uh, he wouldn't like it. Why wouldn't he like it? Because it goes against the basic purpose of this establishment, which is to provide a place for congenial people to meet. You did come here to meet someone, didn't you? Well, take me. I'm a very respectable sort of fellow. That is, I, uh, I look respectable. Jerry, another round here. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I should have another. You don't have to drink it. Just uh, contemplate it. I bet you're doing this for the first time. Doing what for the first time? Coming into a place like this. What makes you say that? It's written all over you. Look in the mirror. You'll see a very nervous lady. Perspiring profusely, too. Well, it is rather warm in here. Ah, contraire, as they say. It's uh, comfortably air-conditioned. I, um... I better go home. Will you be happier at home? Oh, no, but I'll be safer. Aren't you uh, running away from all that safety? Who says I'm running away from anything? Why do people come to places like this? If they were happy and well-adjusted and fulfilled, well, they'd stay at home. Or well, wouldn't they? You're married. <laughs> that was no great deduction. You can see my ring. What's wrong with your husband? Now, 
Don't tell me there's nothing wrong with him. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Oh, he's always so busy. He makes a lot of money, doesn't he? But it takes all his time and energy. And that's why you're here. To find something that's missing in your life. You have this deep, penetrating analysis of other people's alleged problems. Why are you here? I'm traveling. For my company. I guess I'm uh, pretty much like your husband. Oh, no. <laughs> you are more open and relaxed. You have a sense of humor. My wife would disagree. She thinks I'm rather dull. I always seem to be tired. And, uh... Well, my wife complains that I never take her out. I'm on the road too much. The atmosphere in my house must be pretty much the same as the one in yours. What do you suppose your husband's doing right now? He's in Chicago. Oh, my hometown. Where in Chicago? The Ritz Juliet. Oh, I know it well. He's probably downstairs in the Explorer's Bar. <laughs> James? And with some woman. Oh, not James. And he's with a woman who isn't giving him a hard time about how he neglects her. She thinks he's charming and full of fun. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something if she just happened to be my wife? Do you mean your wife goes to bars? You're his wife. And you do. Oh, but this, believe me, this is my very first time. There's a first time for everybody. James, picking up a woman at a bar, <laughs> it boggles the mind. Why? Is James so unattractive? Well, no, not really. How often does uh, James travel away from home? Oh, at least once a week. Very often twice. Mm, same here. And you know something? I really don't have to. You don't? Nobody has to. Very often, things can be settled with a phone call. But it's usually so dull and uncomfortable around the house. Do you think James has someone out of town? I... I never thought about it. That's probably what James is counting on. My wife has accused me of many things, but running around with other women has never been one of them. Oh. Oh. Oh, is right. It never occurred to you, did it? The Explorer Bar in Chicago is a swinging place. Very much like this one. You'll notice a great many attractive people hang out here. Actually, if you're not attractive, they find ways to discourage you from coming. Does that mean I'm attractive? Basically. And what does basically mean? Basically, you're a homebody. And it shows. In subtle ways. How you dress and uh, wear your hair. But you'll get into the swing of things soon enough. My name is Terry. My name is Carlotta. I, uh... Yes? I notice we're keeping this on a first-name basis. Yes. We're defining the limits of our relationship at the very start. Our relationship? Who says we're going to have one? We both did. That's why we're here. You were remarkably sure of yourself, aren't you? Just honest. I think I had better go home. I know a better place. Rainbow Point. It never closes. The casinos keep going all night. The floor shows, lights, music, action. That's what you want, isn't it? That's more than 120 miles away. Is that your only objection? Right, it's a... Across the mountains. It's a great road. I don't know you. As it turns out. You don't know your husband either. Rainbow Point. I bet he never offered to take you there. He says it's a place for foolish and frivolous people. Don't you ever feel foolish and frivolous? Uh... When could we be in Rainbow Point? Before midnight. I always wanted to go. My car's right outside. 
What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? You might think we would be waiting for caution and prudence, those handmaidens to the great goddess of common sense. But no. Isn't it remarkable how people instantly, irrationally, throw everything into the hands of fate? She meets a stranger in a bar, and suddenly she is willing to place her life in his hands. Of course, he is also placing his life in her hands. Act two, in just a few minutes. does the poet say? We do not what we ought, what we ought not we do, and we lean upon the thought that chance will bring us through. Chance. So much of life is left to chance. There are those women who, when they are ready to marry, say yes to the first man who asks them, and when they are ready for an affair, also say yes to the first man who asks them. It's always a matter of being in the right place at the right time, isn't it? Where are we now? Oh, about halfway. Mm. How can you tell? It all looks the same to me. Does it? Oh, just one hill after another surrounded by dark, brooding forest. Hey, none of that. You just get ready for the time of your life. <laughs> oh, I have been getting ready for a long time. Well, at Rainbow Point... The action never stops. I am 40 years old. You know what my life has been? <laughs> Stiff and staid and stuffy. I always wanted to be a writer, a poet. Well, what stopped you? You want the truth? Yeah. I stopped me, but it's James' fault. How do you figure that? Oh, he should have encouraged me more. But let's not talk about James. Let's not talk about... Anything except having the world's greatest time. And we shall. <laughs> oh, and his family. His father's a judge. His sister's a professor in college. His brother's a minister. We have a great name, Armiston. It's a name to be constantly respected, protected. I thought we weren't going to talk about him. <laughs> You're right, we're not. Hey, you know, you are handsome. Thank you. I walked into that place. To me, it was such a an alien action. Maybe not as alien as you think. I said to myself, I'm doing it. I'm actually doing it. I am breaking every canon I've ever lived by. I looked at all the men sitting there, and I said to myself, I hope he tries to pick me up. By he, you mean me. I almost lost my nerve at the last minute, but... You helped me. You got me over my shyness. Well, from here on, it's clear sailing to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. The end of the rainbow. Uh, Look out! Oh, oh, hey, what's the matter? Why, why are we pulling over? We have to stop. What, what, what is it? What is it? I don't feel so... What's wrong? I think it's my heart. Your heart? I know it's my heart. Look, just reach into my jacket pocket. All right. You'll find this small vial. Yes. Hurry. All right. Hurry. All right. All right. Wait. Here. Okay, I've got it. Open it. Oh, I'm trying. Quickly. Why do they make these things so hard to open? Please. Oh, here. Okay. Take got it. out one of the pills. Yes. Uh, just put it in my mouth. All right. Here. Oh, oh. Uh, 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 all right. Do, do, do you feel better? I don't know. Oh, it takes time. But but it works. It works, doesn't it? Uh, it does. Until the one time when it doesn't. I better... You better not talk. Here, please, try to rest. I better get to a hospital. Yes, I, I'll drive. Uh, you move. You move over. I can't. I, you have to help me... Get get around the other side of the car. Push me over. All right. All right. Try to 
push me. Of course. All right. I, all right. You don't do anything. I'm, all right. Oh, please. Easy. Oh, I'm trying. I'm here. I'm trying as best I can. <laughs> can you get by the wheel now? Yes. I think so. Oh, hurry. Oh, don't even know where a hospital is. Keep driving. We'll find something. What's the matter? What's wrong with it? Please, hurry. Something is the matter. Oh, no. I forgot the... What did you forget? Oh, let me look. Oh, I don't believe it, the gas. The needle is past empty. You forgot yeah. to fill the tank. How could you be so stupid as to forget to fill the tank? Please. Oh, I'm sorry. Please. I'm sorry. Well, what are we going to do now? I want to die. We haven't seen a car go by in the last ten minutes. Please. Go for help. Go. Go where? Mm. On this road at night? I can, well, I can hardly breathe. Where am I going to go? I think I think we're over a filling station. It was just a half mile down the road. I'm scared. I don't believe. I know. All right. I remember. I saw it, too, but it, it was closed. It might be. There must be a phone booth. Oh, it's so dark. It's less. I know it's less than a half a mile. It's just that I, I, I'm it's less than a half a mile. You, you can run a half a mile. It, it's just a few minutes. But please, I can't talk. Oh, my chest. It hurts. I don't want to go out there, don't if you? If you don't, I'll die. Why did I ever get into this? Please. All right, all right, all right. Oh, wait. I hear a car coming. He'll help us. I'll wave him down. He'll help us. Help! Stop! Wait! Stop! You have to go, Carlotta. You'll have to go. On this road... At night? How can I do it? And if you know you have heart trouble, why do you go to bars and try to pick up women? Why don't you stay in your room and rest? What right do you have to... to endanger yourself? And me? Do you know what you're asking me to do? Terry? Terry? I can't... talk. All right. All right, I'm going. I, I'm going to start running. I'll, I'll keep running. It's all right. Don't, don't look left. And don't look right. Just run. You keep running. Running. There. There. I see it. I see it. The gas station. Oh. Why is everything so dark? Is, is anyone here? Is anyone here? Of course not. It's closed. A phone booth. There is a phone booth. Oh, now I need a I need a dime. My purse. My purse. Where's my purse? I left it in the car. No, I dropped it. I must have dropped it along the road. Or did I leave it in the car? No. Operator? Oh. Operator, this is an emergency, a matter of life and death. Operator, I'll give you all the money you want later. Please, operator, answer me. Operator! That's against the law. Uh, who, who, you're an officer. A police officer. I, I didn't hear you come up. Well, I shouldn't wonder, ma'am. You're so upset. Oh. Now, what seems to be the trouble? Listen to me. A half a mile down the road, a man in a car. He's having a heart attack. All right. Come with me. I, I come with you? Where? Right here in the squad car. Now, uh, you say it's a heart attack? Yes, he knows it. All right. Don't you worry now. We'll have help for your husband no time at all. Palmer Lee in car 10. 
I need an emergency unit right away. There's a cardiac incident half mile north of Jensen Station on Sunset Highway. Now, you just get inside, ma'am. We'll go back to where your husband's at. But... Yes, ma'am? I, uh... Get inside. We have to get there quick. Now, what's your name? Uh, my, my name? Um, my name is, uh, Fowl. Rosemary Farrell. And his name? And his, his name is, uh, Terry. Terry. And where are we bound? Where were we bound? To Rainbow Point. I know you're very upset and excited, Miss Farrell, at a time like this, but these are just routine questions. The questions? Are, are they going to ask a lot of questions? Well, when they get him to the hospital, the doctors will want to know all about your husband's medical history and so forth. Oh. Will there be any other questions? Like what? Well, will it get into the newspapers? Are you, uh, your husband famous? Oh, no, no. Well, that isn't going to make the front page. Maybe carry it on the inside somewhere. Why? Well, it has to go down in the police reports. The newspaper fellows uh, check those things out. The reporters? If it's a slow day, they give it some space. So everybody will know about it. Ah, I see him. Hey, just what you said. Uh, Mr. Farrell. Mr. Farrell, you okay? Farrell? Don't, don't try to talk now. Just rest easy. Relax now. Help, help is on the way. My, my name isn't Farrell. Yeah, I should have known. My name... My name is... Now, don't, don't talk. Just rest now. Yeah. Just rest. My, my wife. Call my wife. Sure, sure. I... I love my wife. I know. If I don't make it, tell her I loved her. Now, you're going to make it. Yeah, you're going to do fine. <laughs> Everything's under control. Hey, listen, you hear that? There's help's coming now. Everything's going to be okay. Uh -huh. Okay, let's get that stretcher over here. Hi, Parmalee. Hello, Mickey. Are you on tonight, huh? Yeah. Uh, fellas, help me ease them out onto the stretcher. Give me a hand. All right. Uh, You'll be fine, Mickey. Uh, Just lie back. Don't try to talk. Uh, what you do, Parmalee? Uh, Just happen to see him off the road? No, no, no. This woman was with him, and she ran down to Jensen's gas station to try to get some help. Woman, huh? Uh, and he's wearing a wedding band. I... Uh, <laughs> I guess you better be your sister. All right, now, slide it easy into the ambulance. That woman and me will follow you in the squad car. Okay, oh. fellas, Harry, let's move. Okay, lady, let's get struck. Lady? Hey! Where'd she go? Lady? Ma'am? Uh, now, now, look, I know what you're thinking. That there's going to be publicity and they'll find out who you are and you'll have to answer questions and it'll get back to your husband. But you can't hide here. Now, lady, wherever you are, come on out. This is kind of wild country. You got some big cats in those woods, maybe some bear. I'm not trying to scare you, but you have to think clear now. You've lost your head. Come on back, please. For your own good. For her own good. But how good is that? Our heroine is being tossed on the horns of a dilemma. To accompany the police officer to the hospital means her immediate identification and the unpleasant complications that are bound to ensue. But what is her choice? The desolate wilderness, alone at night? It all goes to prove the truth of the old proverb. Getting into mischief is always easier than getting out. Well, we'll just have to get into the third act. If it's 10.30 in the evening, where would you expect to find Mrs. Carlotta Armiston? 
or to be more precise, Mrs. James Vernon Armiston, in her rather luxurious home, or in the equally well-appointed home of a friend or relative. Certainly you would not expect to find her crouching behind a tree in the desolate wilderness alongside the lonely Sunset Highway. And less than 50 feet away, a police officer is trying to talk some sense into her. Ma'am, you better listen to me. You can't stay out here alone at night. Oh, go away, please. Go away and leave me alone. Lady, now please think about what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. All I need is for James to find out. Oh, no, never. Well, I have to report in. Nobody be able to come out here to find you now till daylight. That could be too late. Oh, just go away. This is the worst thing you could do. It's the only thing I can do. How can I answer the questions you'll ask? What is your relationship to this man? Relationship? Why were you with him? Okay, lady, you've been warned. to bear. I better get out of here. I better get back to the road. He was right. I can't stay here. Officer! Officer! You wait! Wait for me! Officer! Officer! He... He's gone. I should have listened. Oh, that's a car coming. I'll get a lift. No. about big cats. What kind of big cat? I better run. I can't. Why can't I run? Why can't I move? I can't move. I'm so terrified. I can't move. Hey. Is that really a human woman standing out here in the road? In the middle of nowhere? Hop in! What's the matter? You want to stand out there all night? My name's Marty. What's yours? Uh, I, you what? I can't move. Why not? I'm so frightened. What's there to be scared about? Huh? Everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's kind of scary out here at that. Yeah. Why don't you get inside? I told you, I can't move. Hey, maybe I got just the medicine for that, yeah? <laughs> Here, have some. What is that? <laughs> Who's it look like? A bottle, right? What's inside? Okay, I swallow. No, no, no. I better not. Come on. It'll relax you. Go ahead. There. <laughs> You feel better? I, I, I don't know. Just you step inside. Mm. Yeah? Uh. See? <laughs> you can do it. Mm. Now, that wasn't hard, was it? Mm. And we are off. And may I have the bottle, please? Thank you. Uh, you're... You're not going to drink any of that now, are you? Well, what's wrong with now? Well, you're, you're driving. You shouldn't. What are you doing out here? <laughs> oh, by your lonesome. This hour of the night, honey. Uh, it's a, a long story. I just love long stories. You know why? <laughs> because that's life. Life is a long story. Uh, please. Please don't take another drink. Don't worry. I'll leave some for you. I don't want any. What? Oh, look out. Uh, look out for what? You took that curve too fast. That, 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 that's one thing you don't want to do. Don't tell oh. me how to drive. Oh. I was born with a steering wheel in my hands, you know. I can drive with my eyes closed. I can drive fast asleep. What do you think of that? Please, I must ask you to stop the car. What? I would like to get out. Did you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. I am asking you to let me out. Why? Be because. 
Just because... Because you don't want to drive with a drunk. Look, I didn't say that. But you meant it. Just please let me out. I'm... I'm asking you... No kidding. <laughs> a good looker like you. What were you doing out there all along, huh? Oh. I mean, this is the middle of no place. <laughs> okay? I'll tell you. You were with a guy. Am I right? <laughs> I'm always right. Please... Stop the car. You're like my wife. No, 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 you're much better looking. I would like to get out. You had a fight with a guy, huh? Right? Eh? Now, why did you have a fight with him? Well, I'll tell you again. He made a pass at you, right? But he did it the wrong way. No finesse. <laughs> now, honey, you're going to have absolutely no complaints will about you, me. Please, will you please stop the car? First, yeah, give me a little kiss. I huh? want to get out. For sure. But first, give me a kiss. Take your arm away. Why? Because you can't drive with one hand. I cut it out, baby. I, I quit putting on all that. What act? A dream like you has been around, I can tell. Will you take your arm away. What would you be doing out here by yourself? Some guy ditched you, that's why? I just want to get out. We'll both get out and we'll have a real good time. You are drunk. Don't let that bother you. Let go of me. Now, you just hold no, still, you sweetie. Let go. I said hold I still. Look out. Look out. Mind if I come in? I see you got home all right, Miss Armiston. Uh, how do you know my name? You have much trouble? How did you find out who I am? Oh, I know how you got home. You managed to reach that all-night diner ten miles south of the gas station and got a cab. I described you. That's what Bill Henry, who owns the place, told me. What do you want? I just came here to return your purse. My purse? It's a bit scorched. I didn't know it was yours at first. Where did you find it? Well, where do you think? I noticed you didn't have one when I first saw you at the gas station. and Then I drove you back to Mr. Starrett's car. Starrett? Is that his name? That was his name. Oh. You didn't know him very well, did you? I didn't know him at all. Hey, you must have picked up your purse before you went off to hide. Yes, and then I lost it again. I'll tell you where I found it. I was driving around looking for you, and I saw a fire in the distance. When I got there, I found a car in flames. The man had evidently driven off the road. I noticed the scorched purse on the road. It's... Yours. Yes. He was drunk. And when he hit that tree, I tried to get him out of the car, but he was too big, he was too heavy to move. And then the fire started. There, there was nothing more I could do. Yes, I understand. Uh, am I going to be arrested? Arrested? What for? Won't they want to ask me questions? We have all the answers. Man dies of a heart attack. Another man gets killed because he was driving while drunk. I mean, you didn't really know either of them, so what light could you shed on the subject? Thank you, officer. Thank you. Ms. Armiston, I only met you for the first time last night, and I, and I wouldn't swear to it, but... I imagine that you've got more gray hairs in your head today. Yes. You have a very nice home, Miss Armiston. And I'm sure you must have a nice husband, too. Well, I'd better be going. Uh, all this was uh, unofficial, so I'd appreciate it if you never said anything about it. I won't. It's been a pleasure. Bye, Miss Emerson. Goodbye, officer. Oh, 
Uh, uh, yes, uh, when is your next flight to Chicago? I'd like to make a reservation. Excuse me, could you tell me where the Explorer's Bar is? Other end of the lobby, miss. Thank you. I don't think she's interested, James. What? The tall blonde in the booth. You've been giving her the eye for five minutes. There's nothing doing there. Take my word for it. Carlotta. I think she wants the dark-haired man at the end of the bar. Carlotta. But he's been giving me the eye. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Carlotta. All right, I tell you what. Let's neither of us ask each other that question. Look, I, I just came down for a night camp. Sure. I guess you caught me. Why do people come to places like this, James? To find someone. Right? Right. Have you found anyone? I think so. So have I. And I also found something else. The end of the rainbow. Oh, Carlotta. We have so much to talk about. We do. But we don't have to talk about it tonight. They say that no man is a hero to his valet. It is also true that few men are heroes to their wives. Does custom stale? Does familiarity blunt the appreciation? The next time you see an attractive, exciting-looking woman, consider the fact that she may be rather dull and ordinary to her husband. I shall return shortly. We look for mysteries in plays and books, stories and movies, and we never really appreciate the fact that within ourselves are the deepest and most perplexing mysteries of all. Who are we really? Why do we fall in love and out of love? What are the sudden bursts of passion and of emotion that drive us to all sorts of incomprehensible actions? Shall we ever know? It seems that the more we learn about the human psyche, the less we understand. Our cast included Terry Keene, Mandel Kramer, and Bob Caliban. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Until next time, pleasant dreams.